Thank you, Mike. Uh, well, I love Map Server, and I will try and show you some tips and tricks from, for that. This is actually the, what my Map Server configuration, configurations produced like for the last five or six years, and now I will see what, what can I do to raise raise the visual appearance. So I will talk about labels, label placement, uh, shadows, and uh, shadows on objects, and some other small tips and tricks. So who am I? Well, I'm a regular map server user. Uh, well, a little more. <laughs> uh, I'm a land surveyor from the beginning, and I have PhD in cartography. Uh, I was a grass user in the late 80s and beginning of 90s. I even wrote some code to grass in the old days, but I don't write code anymore. Uh, so I started to use Map Server first time in 2001, I think, and then I started to use it more professionally uh, in 2012. I'm a senior techni did, uh, technical fellow at Saab. And I've been doing some major projects for, with Map Server. For instance, the Smack M. It's the digital shards, uh, uh, C shards. I don't know. Has any one of you used them? They're all on GitHub. So to do S52 styling on S57 data. Uh, but my main goal is I love doing beautiful maps with WMS. So the tools I will talk about today is layer composition pi pipeline. Uh, I will talk about a new feature that's called center line in GeoTransform. I will talk about a very small tip about transparency in text shadows, and I will finally talk a little about name styles. I think that's a concept that there are some questions about it sometimes, and people, it's hard to understand, so I will talk about it. Well, first of all, I will start to talk about chainable compositioning filters. Uh, it was introduced already in 7.2 in Map Server, but um, unfortunately, how, how many of you have used that in the room? <laughs> Not so many. And it could be that it was not properly documented. So I made an effort together with Jeff McKenna this winter and we documented it in a better way. And I made some examples that you can run in, 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 in the environment. Uh, uh, so the primary purpose of these filters is to uh, create soft shadows or blurring effects, uh, although it could be other things as well. Uh, for instance, in the old days when you see all these tutorials with hill shading, um, usually they brought it outside these things in Photoshop or ImageMagick and then brought it back in again. Now you can do those blending effects directly in Map Server instead, so that's another usage. But I will talk about, uh, so there's two things here. There's the comp filter. That's the actual um, operators you're doing. It could be blurring, translating, grayscale, blackening, and whiten. And there, there is the operator, uh, composition operator. And as you see, there is a very long list of things, how you can bind things. Uh, for you uh, that are um, uh, no image magic, for instance, uh, the image processing software, a uh, lot of these uh, are, are good examples, and there is a very good explanation, I think, on Wikipedia for, for how these operators are working. So let's just do a first example here. We have a polygon, a simple lake polygon. So we could do, uh, 
uh, a comp filter, whitening, blur, uh, soft light, and then put the op opacity to 50%. And you see here, you have a slight shadow inside the lake now. So that's one, one thing, and then, of course, you can De depending on the uh, composition operator, you get, could get different effects on that, and you can tweak it with the transparency, how, how, how much of the effect you would like to see. Uh, uh, another thing here is uh, just want to put a shadow on a house. I could then, if uh, I do grayscale, translate, blur, and opacity. Here on the house. Uh, you can do shadows on lines. Uh, so you just do translate and blur. And so you get a second shadow. I don't know. Can you see it from the back that there is a shadow there? It's just slight, but that's the beauty of it also. It should not be so dominant, I think, to produce these nice cartographic effects. It should be just, just barely visible, I think. And finally, you can do it on point objects as well. So here I have a three, tree. That's a vector symbol, a native vec uh, map server vector symbol. You can do it on other. So I did a black and translate and blur. And then I have this nice shadow on the tree. And I, 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 I feel sorry that this has been around for so, such a long time and people haven't started using it. Because this really, really make maps stand out. And, but there is, I don't know, do we have some Swiss people here? Yeah, there is this site, you portal the SITN. In the remote session, uh, Okay, okay. So actually, I believe they have been using it. They were the ones sponsoring this yes. functionality or, or that agency. And Thomas Bornfort, who implemented it, worked together with this office. So whenever I want to have some inspiration, I go to this site to see, you can see all this nice blurring, you have composition with the trees and shadows on the houses and so on. So th this is where I go for inspiration to, to look at this fan fantastic because, well, Swiss cartography, in my mind, is one of the best in the world, really. So. So, but let's continue. There's more. I continue the experiments. Uh, well, it says in the documentation that you can't do this on text unless what? Anyone knows? Well, there is this thing with the label cache. It's not working on the label cache. It could possibly be implemented in the future, but the label cache, uh, if you turn that off, and you could do that for certain layers if you, if you knew that you had forest names, for instance. Uh, 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 so if you turn it off, then you can do the, these operators and get the shadows there or other, uh, other things. So you could operate on, on text as well, with that exception that you have to turn the label cache off. You could do nice things with a borderline. Uh, I just stack five composite blocks here on top of each other, and then you get this very nice shadow behind the, behind the border here. So that's another way to do more composite blocks. You could stack any amount of composite blocks, really. You could do, even do it on vector symbols that are patterns. 
So here's an example that I have a vector symbol for grass. And I, I, I did shadows on the uh, vector pattern within the polygon. Actually, there's another piece here that I have a layer that draws the yellow color, of course, but that's just a detail. So what I want to say here is the exchangeable composition filters, there's endless possibilities as I see it. And I think we as a community should help each other to explore. Because you saw all these compounds, like 30 of them, and how you combine all this. This is a major task just to explore all the possibilities. Well, I've shown you like eight or ten examples here today that I made up myself, but with, with the help of everyone, I think we could come up with a large gallery of the effects we could do with these composition and filters. So there's room for everyone to help out here. So next thing is just a small trick. Uh, I think I answered this on the users list sometime. You can, if you want to have transparent shadows on text or outlines, you can specify the, that color with a hex instead of RGB. Just a small trick. I do it too. So for instance, in this one, here I, I don't use it. Uh, here I use it but not there. So then you get a little bit of the background into the outline. Now we come to something new in 8.0. Uh, it's implemented by Steve Lime. It's the GeoTransform Centerline. It's that you grab polygons and you process a centerline that you can use for labeling. Uh, uh, so this has always been my dream to be able to put uh, labels inside polygons that line up nice and nicely with the shape of them. So I were, was very enthusiastic and helped uh, Steve to do a lot of testing. Jeff McKenna and I was testing all the winter long here. So we were bringing in uh, the main branch into Docker container and then tested, tested. Uh, Next, uh, next uh, release that Steve made, we brought in this new and tested and tested. And finally, after three months, uh, it worked the way both Steve and uh, Jeff and I wanted it to work. So, and what I, my contribution here was that I brought in some Swedish data sets that were a little more complicated. For instance, this lake is kind of complicated <laughs> with this large island in, in the middle. So I tested it with Swedish 1 to 1 million data, Swedish 1 to 250k data, and I made one more test. So what you do here is that you do year transform, and you have the center line or shape. That's the geometry. And you can then, I could either, I could do some pre-processing that's done outside here. Uh, so you could do the smooth filter, or you could do simplify, or you could do simplify TT. That, that either you add lines to a polygon, or you remove, and then it behaves better, uh, the algorithm. So this worked with one to one million. It worked very good on my... Uh, four out of my five days, not that one. I, I, knew, I, know, I know now what was wrong with that, so I will explain that in a little bit. Uh, so here, here are working good examples that I did simplify center line, smoothia, smoothia. And you could set the parameters differently on the smooth and simplified operators. Uh, I had also example with Norwegian text boxes. 
and that worked perfectly because in the Norwegian data set they had polygons where to place the text. Uh, so it was just perfect for that. So the ones missing here is, I think it's too close to the edge. So. Uh, then I ran it just last week. Uh, this is actually run with a release candidate two, I think it was. No, the beta two, I ran it with last week. Uh, I wanted to run it with, uh, on uh, rivers, really. And then I found out that I had to set the parameters a little differently. So I, I found out that you can also have uh, you, you could do the smooth and simplify operator inside the center line, so then that would be a pre-processing step instead of a post-processing step. So you could have this inside, so this center line smooth the shape, so I'm actually smoothing the polygon first, and then I'm doing the center line. This red line should, is just to show what, what the scent line has. It should not be shown, of course, in the end when you do your final step. Compared to these ones where I did the smooth or simplified before, so that's a pro post-processing step that I'm applying to the red line. Okay. And so I got it to work quite well. This is with a pan-European EGM data set. Uh, of course, then you can have repeat distance. To have several ones. Or you can change the, uh, the, the repeat distance to a lower value and have more labels. It's depending on what you're really doing your um, WMS configuration for is it's a small device or a larger device. That's how I find out if I want to have more densely, uh, densely, dense labels on, on such objects. It's like uh, doing labels on roads, really, road names. So my findings here. Uh, I think here is the same thing that we have to find good parameters tuning for different data sets. Uh, figure out when pre-processing is needed, that's the thing inside the center line, and find out when we need post-processing, that's uh, processing the red line that you're gonna do the labeling on. Uh, so, one thing that I forgot to mention, as a side effect, of this, there's two new functions also in GeoTransform that's called inner and outer that's the created. And I think the inner function could be useful for filtering complex lakes like this to remove. Now it removes all, but if I think we had inner with the arg size argument, I think that would be, so that's on my wish list for <laughs> for Steve to do, to re-enhance really. Here's a quick example with a line and uh, with text and symbol collision. Actually, I, 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 I Google my name on the map server users list. This was the answer I had done five years ago that I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought it was a kind of neat trick. So here is, we see we have collision between a symbol and text along a line. So here is the symbol, and it's the line. And finally, it's the, yeah, it's the line. What you could do is, when you draw the square, you could do a fake label, and um, then you could, re uh, you could uh, avoid the collision. So you could dr dr draw a fake label that takes care of that in the label cache, and 
the, and the fake label is transparent. So that's one of those le neat little tricks. Finally, name styles. Uh, this took a long, long time for me to figure out. I don't have a full example, but I have one on Git, uh, GitHub, a GIST that shows this. And you use layer class groups and la class groups for the style to create that. And I made a style that's called color, and one that's called green, and one that's called gray. And then you use the layer group for the layer specification. Uh, and layers can also be used as uh, root uh, layers. So I, I, I'm pass that as an exercise for yourself to try this out, really, because it's hard to grasp unless you have an example. So I created this example, well, some years ago. So I could do layer, square, circle. Here I specified two layers, green and gray. I specified the root layer, that's the map file name, and I say it's color. So color means blue and red. I can do root layer and style spray. And I can add even more examples here uh, with different variants, and you can access. So the class group is the default here. So then I get color here. So there is a full example here about that, uh, that you can study yourself. So I gave that as a home exercise for you. <laughs> so some of the examples are available on GitHub. <laughs>